Have you ever watched the 1946 movie Gilda? It stars Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford, both fantastic actors. The story revolves around a complicated love triangle set in the backdrop of post-World War II Buenos Aires. Hayworth's character, Gilda, is the epitome of allure and mystery entangling both the male leads in her web of charm. The movie is a classic Hollywood noir, filled with intrigue, betrayal, and unexpected twists. Keep watching to discover some surprising and emotional facts about the making of this film. Who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this movie? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories related to this iconic film. In the world of classic noir films, there's one particular gem that shines brightly even today. It tells a story of love, power struggles, and deception, featuring a captivating performance from a leading lady alongside a strong male lead. The film's intricate plot, combined with stellar cinematography, creates a mysterious and alluring atmosphere that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. Insights from the special features of the Criterion disc offer interesting perspectives on the characters and dynamics within the movie. What's particularly intriguing is how the film managed to push the boundaries of censorship at the time, presenting a bold and sensual portrayal of its female lead. Produced and co-written by women, the movie showcases a powerful and sexy character, exploring her vulnerabilities and conflicts with depth and nuance. As the story unfolds, the chemistry between the characters intensifies, drawing viewers deeper into the melodrama. The interactions between the main trio are seamless and engaging, enhanced by exceptional cinematography that adds to the film's allure. The iconic songs featured in the movie serve as memorable cinematic moments, contributing to its lasting impact despite an unexpected and enigmatic ending. In summary, this classic noir film offers a nuanced exploration of love, power dynamics, and sensuality, with the performances of its lead actors leaving a lasting impression. The film's intricate plot and captivating visuals ensure its enduring popularity among fans of the genre, leaving audiences with a sense of satisfaction and curiosity. Glenn Ford, who hadn't appeared in a film since Destroyer, returned to the screen for Gilda in 1946 after serving in the Marines. During filming, Harry Cohn, concerned about Rita Hayworth's public image due to her marriage to Orson Welles, closely monitored her interactions with Ford. Despite gossip surrounding a possible affair between Hayworth and Ford, the actors remained unfazed, aware of the hidden recording devices in their dressing rooms. Despite the behind-the-scenes drama, Gilda earned a spot on the American Film Institute's list of the 400 Greatest American Movies in 1998. In 1946, a film was released that proved to be a significant financial success for Columbia Pictures. This success led Rita Hayworth's agent, Johnny Hyde, to negotiate a share of profits for Hayworth in subsequent pictures. Despite initial refusal from studio chief Harry Cohn, Hayworth's sick days during production of her next film led to a concession forming the Beckworth Corporation to collect 25% of net profits from remaining films on her Columbia contract. The original one-sheet movie poster from 1946 is highly sought after by collectors, fetching substantial sums at auctions. Interestingly, the name Johnny is mentioned 101 times throughout the film, contributing to its unique legacy. In a pivotal scene of the 1946 film, Rita Hayworth, opposite Glenn Ford, inadvertently delivered a physical blow that left Ford without two of his teeth. This unscripted moment added a raw authenticity to the on-screen tension. Contrary to popular belief, the film doesn't showcase Rita Hayworth's true singing voice. Despite aspirations to sing on her own, Hayworth's vocals were dubbed by Anita Ellis. Harry Cohn, head of Columbia Pictures, funded Hayworth's voice lessons, but her singing never met his standards. The bitterness from this experience lingered throughout Hayworth's life. A curious detail surfaces during a late-night guitar scene in a bar. When Gilda strums the guitar, a keen observer may notice that it's not Rita Hayworth's hands playing the chords. The discrepancy becomes apparent, especially from the back of the guitar, as the chords played differ from the subtle movements of Hayworth's hand on the guitar neck. Such nuances in Gilda provide glimpses into the challenges faced by Rita Hayworth during the production and shed light on the complex dynamics within the film. Did you know that behind the scenes of a famous old movie, some interesting things happened? When they were filming a particular song scene, the actress Rita Hayworth had to wear a special tight garment because she had recently become a mom. Also, in a photo in the movie, the baby is actually the actor Glenn Ford's real son. These little details make the movie more interesting because they mix the actors' real lives with the movie's story. It's like a peek into their personal worlds while they're working. Isn't that neat? In the world of classic cinema, there's a scene that's become legendary. 
It's where a certain actress makes her grand entrance, not once, but twice. The first time, she wears a striped blouse and a dark skirt, exuding elegance and charm. Then, in an alternate take, she appears in a stunning off-the-shoulder gown, mesmerizing everyone with her allure. This moment isn't just about style, it's about choices. These choices add depth to the character, sparking conversations among viewers and critics alike. And the impact doesn't stop there. It's felt in other films too. Take for example a character like Jessica Rabbit who channels the same charisma and allure, paying homage to that iconic scene. Behind the scenes, there's a director who played a crucial role in shaping this actress's career. Their collaboration brought critical acclaim and a chemistry that audiences couldn't get enough of. It's a partnership that truly made magic happen on screen. In the end, this film isn't just a classic, it's a testament to talent and collaboration. It's a reminder of the power of choices, both in front of and behind the camera. And it's a story that will always be remembered in the history of cinema. Imagine a dazzling moment at a carnival, where a woman gracefully dances with a man to the tune of a beloved song. This scene resonates with many, capturing a feeling of both escape and passion amidst the bustling atmosphere. It's like a timeless painting, reminding us of the beauty found in life's fleeting moments. This captivating portrayal, along with her other memorable roles, pays tribute to her talent and charm, continuing to enchant audiences even today. In the realm of classic cinema, there exists a film that has left an indelible mark on audiences throughout the years. It holds a special place in the hearts of movie buffs and casual viewers alike. Initially considered for Technicolor, the movie was shot in black and white due to camera availability. Rudolf Maté, the cinematographer renowned for his work on earlier films featuring Rita Hayworth, was brought on board for this project. Despite Anita Ellis providing the vocals for the standout song Put the Blame on Mame, it was Rita Hayworth herself who sang the tune while strumming a guitar at the bar, a fact confirmed by TCM Commentary. The allure and mystery portrayed in the film captivated audiences, rendering it a timeless classic. Love, betrayal, and redemption are central themes that resonate deeply with viewers, ensuring the film's place in cinematic history. The movie features unforgettable scenes, including the introduction of the enigmatic character with a seductive hair flip that has become etched in the minds of viewers. The chemistry between the lead characters adds layers of complexity to the storyline, enhancing its appeal. Critics lauded the film as a masterpiece, praising Hayworth's mesmerizing performance and the atmospheric cinematography. Decades after its release, the movie continues to enchant new generations of moviegoers, solidifying its status as a cinematic gem. Its inclusion in the prestigious list of must-see movies is a testament to its enduring impact and cultural significance. Crafting a narrative that explores love, betrayal, and redemption, the movie stands as a shining example of timeless storytelling and captivating performances. It remains a cherished piece of cinematic history cherished by audiences around the world. In the mid-1940s, a memorable collaboration between a well-known actor and actress resulted in the creation of several films. One of these movies stands out as particularly noteworthy, gaining recognition for its significance in cinematic history. He, along with his co-star, shared a remarkable on-screen chemistry that extended beyond this particular film. They worked together on multiple occasions, starring in several other notable productions. Among these were Affair in Trinidad, The Lady in Question, The Loves of Carmen, and The Money Trap. Interestingly, there was a change in the choice of director for this project during its early stages. Initially, another director was attached to the film, which played a crucial role in shaping its final form. His involvement in films that have earned a place in the National Film Registry demonstrates the lasting influence of his career. Some of these films, including Gilda, The Big Heat, Blackboard Jungle, 310 to Yuma, and Superman have been acknowledged for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance by the Library of Congress. In the world of classic cinema, this collaboration and its resulting films serve as a testament to the talent of the artists involved. The story influenced by the initial direction and his enduring presence has become a timeless cinematic gem that continues to resonate with audiences. Amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's Egyptian theater, a grand celebration unfolded, marking a significant milestone in the life of a beloved actor. The event, held on May 1, 26, was a tribute to a distinguished individual, showcasing his timeless contribution to the world of cinema. With over 700 enthusiastic attendees filling the venue, the evening was filled with nostalgia and reverence for the achievements of a cinematic icon. Taking center stage as the host of the evening was none other than the actor's own son, Peter Ford. Amidst a sold-out crowd, 
He guided the audience through a journey of reminiscence and appreciation for his father's illustrious career. The highlight of the event was the screening of a meticulously restored version of a classic film that had left an indelible mark on cinematic history. In a pivotal scene set against the backdrop of a bustling casino on VE Day, the crowd erupted into song, filling the air with melodies that paid homage to a revered Argentine hero. The choice of music added a unique dimension to the narrative, deviating from the expected patriotic anthem and captivating audiences with its emotive resonance. Beyond its narrative and performances, the movie made a visual statement that transcended time. Its promotional poster secured a place of honor among the best movie posters ever, a testament to its enduring visual appeal and artistic brilliance. In conclusion, the celebration of a cinematic milestone, the poignant choice of music and a pivotal scene, and the enduring recognition of the movie's visual aesthetics collectively underscore its lasting influence in the realm of cinema. In an unusual collaboration, a digital version of Michael Jackson joined Rita Hayworth in a clip meant for his concert. During the smooth criminal act, Jackson's image seamlessly blended with Hayworth's scene from a 1946 film, creating a surprising mix of different time periods on stage. Interestingly, despite being the main actor in the film, Glenn Ford wasn't prominently featured on the posters. Instead, the focus was on Rita Hayworth, highlighting her character's strong presence. This different approach challenged the norm of promoting the male lead. Another interesting aspect of the film is the introduction of actress Argentina Brunetti. Her debut in the movie was a significant moment in her career, adding to the film's overall importance. To sum up, the movie Gilda's significance goes beyond its release, as seen in the integration of Michael Jackson's image and the unique promotional choices that emphasize Rita Hayworth over the male lead. Argentina Brunetti's debut also contributes to the film's historical importance, creating a story that still connects with audiences today. Director Charles Vidor was known for his harsh treatment of crew members and supporting actors, often insulting them if their work didn't meet his standards. The script for the movie wasn't completed when filming began, leading to scenes being improvised on the spot. Choreographer Jack Cole mentioned that script pages would arrive just before shooting, resulting in a disjointed storyline. The film's release in Rio de Janeiro caused riots due to high ticket prices. It's evident that the movie faced numerous challenges during production, impacting its coherence and reception. Charles Vidor, previously known for directing Rita Hayworth in CoverGirl, directed a notable film featuring her in Italy. Rita Hayworth's films in Italy were dubbed by either Tina Landanzi or Lydia Simonski. Two songs she performed in the movie, Put the Blame on Mame and Amato Mio, were written by Doris Fisher and Alan Roberts. This songwriting duo also composed songs for her next film, Down to Earth and The Lady from Shanghai. All of these songs contributed to the film's memorable soundtrack. In a famous scene from a fancy dress party, she and Johnny shared a dance to Anywhere, a song from her previous movie. Rita Hayworth, known for her memorable roles in classics like Only Angels Have Wings, and the lady from Shanghai has left a strong impression on movies. Reflecting on her dating experiences, she once said, they fell in love with her character and woke up with me. This touching statement captures the essence of the lasting appeal she brought to her performances. Throughout her impressive career, she held audiences spellbound with her captivating presence and undeniable talent. Whether playing the alluring Gilda or the mysterious Elsa Bannister, her performances were filled with a depth and complexity that connected with viewers around the world. Her magnetic presence on screen went beyond just the movies, establishing her as one of Hollywood's most memorable stars. Apart from her movie accomplishments, she also appeared on numerous magazine covers, charming readers with her beauty and charisma. In her personal life, she often made headlines, adding to her mystery and allure. Yet, amidst the glamour of Hollywood, she remained a mysterious figure, fiercely guarding her privacy. As she grew older, she stepped away from the public eye, preferring a quieter life. However, her influence lives on, inspiring actors and filmmakers who continue to be inspired by her work. Rita Hayworth's impact on cinema is timeless, her performances serving as proof of her enduring talent and lasting effect on the industry. In the pages of film history, her name will always be linked with grace, beauty, and talent. She was more than just an actress. She was a pioneer, breaking barriers, and challenging norms in a male-dominated industry. Rita Hayworth's influence continues to shine brightly, her presence felt in every movie frame that features her image. In the world of old-time movies, there's one from 1946 that has left a lasting mark. It starts off by saying it's all made up, just to be clear. Jump to 1994, 
and it pops up unexpectedly in the Shawshank Redemption. That movie is based on a story by Stephen King called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. They cleverly use a poster of Rita Hayworth, which becomes important later on. This 1946 movie even got a nod from the American Film Institute in 2004. They recognized it for a catchy song called Put the Blame on Mame. This shows how it's contributed to American cinema music. This movie has really stuck around, showing it's still important long after it first came out. Back in 1946, a movie started out as a simple drama without any singing or dancing. But as time went on, it changed a lot. What began as a story with no songs turned into something much bigger and more special. In 2002, a play called Lush Life took a scene from this movie where someone gets slapped and put it into their own story. They even added a new character named Arthur, played by Jerry Stiller, to make it different. This movie didn't just affect the screen, it also left a big mark in Spain, especially in a place called the Basque Country. There, it inspired people to make a popular snack called Pinksos. This snack has olives, marinated anchovies, and spicy peppers, and it's thought to be influenced by the movie. The snack, known as the Gilda, became really important in shaping the local food scene. This whole thing shows how much this movie still matters today, even in unexpected places around the world. Back in the late 1990s, there was a famous music video featuring the Spice Girls. In that video, Jerry Horner had a scene that was black and white and looked a lot like a scene from a big movie in 1946 starring Rita Hayworth. When that movie came out, there was a test for an atomic bomb at a place called Bikini Atoll, and they put a picture of Rita Hayworth on the bomb because she was such a big star back then. They named the bomb Gilda after the character Hayworth played in the movie. In 1949, a writer named Pier Paolo Pasolini saw the same movie and wrote about it in a book he wrote called Amato Mio. In the book, the main character Desiderio, who was a lot like Pasolini himself, thought the movie was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. This shows that even years after it was made, the movie still had a big effect on people, even people who were famous in their own right. In December 2013, a very famous movie got recognized by the National Film Registry. There was a guy named Humphrey Bogart who was supposed to play a character named Johnny Farrell in this really cool old movie. But he said no because he was scared that Rita Hayworth, who was also in the movie, would be too popular and he wouldn't get noticed. In another movie called Mulholland Drive that came out in 2001, there's a part where Laura Haring's character sees a poster of Rita Hayworth and decides to call herself Rita. That's a little wink to how famous Rita Hayworth was because of the old movie. Even years later, people still remember this movie and talk about it in other movies. It's kind of like it left a big mark on movies that came after it. So yeah, even though it's an old movie, it's still making waves in the world of movies today. In a moment of doubt, Glenn Ford hesitated when he had to slap Rita Hayworth on screen. But with Rita and the director's encouragement, he let go of his doubts and delivered a surprising slap that had a big impact. Rita's famous black dress had a special story. It was inspired by a painting and designed by Jean Lewis. This dress became a big part of Gilda's charm, just like the painting it was based on, which is now in a museum in New York. One memorable scene in the movie was set in a nightclub called Amato Mio. Rita looked stunning in a sexy outfit that caught everyone's attention. This outfit was so famous that it was sold for a lot of money at an auction. These stories show how special Gilda was, from the great acting to the amazing costumes. Everything about the movie made it unforgettable and left a big impression on cinema history. Amidst the vibrant backdrop of Buenos Aires, the film underwent a transformation from its original American setting, delving into a more gritty narrative. This shift allowed for a raw portrayal of the storyline circumstances. The film restoration became a joint effort involving UCLA Film and Television Archive, Sony Pictures Entertainment, the Library of Congress, and the National Film and Television Archive. This careful restoration process aimed to preserve the film's cinematic charm. On screen, a famous leading actor collaborated with Rita Hayworth in various films, including Affair in Trinidad, The Lady in Question, The Loves of Carmen, The Money Trap, and the notable film in question. Their partnership in Gilda marked a significant point in both their careers, contributing to the film's charm. The restored movie, capturing the essence of a bygone cinematic era, features a captivating performance and a unique Buenos Aires setting that adds layers of interest to the narrative. Reinvigorated to its original brilliance, the film stands as a testament to the captivating performances of its actors, the evocative setting, and the engaging storyline. 
In the aftermath of its release, observers have noted a subtle suggestion of a homosexual undertone between Johnny and Balin in the concluding scenes of the film. Charles Vidor, the director, expressed surprise at this interpretation, stating he never perceived the characters in that manner. Glenn Ford, who played Johnny, also admitted that the cast was oblivious to any such subtext during filming. Early in the narrative, Johnny provides insight into his success at the card tables, hinting at his prowess as a card counter. These revelations add layers to the storyline, with the director and actors unaware of the inferred relationships. It sheds light on the nuanced dynamics between the characters, offering viewers a fresh perspective on the film's narrative. In one memorable scene, the main character Gilda does a captivating striptease while singing Put the Blame on Mame, making it a standout moment in the movie. However, it's surprising to learn that the voice we hear isn't Rita Hayworth's, but Anita Ellis's who dubbed over for that part. This detail might astonish some viewers, giving us a peek behind the scenes of how the film was made. It's interesting to know these behind-the-scenes facts that add a different layer to the movie-watching experience. Amidst the making of a famous old movie, a sad event occurred. One of the actors, George McCready, who played a bad guy in the film, faced a personal tragedy when his wife passed away. This cast a shadow over the whole movie set, making things somber. Even though George was going through a tough time, he kept on acting well in the movie. This made the story more real, but it was hard for him and the others on set. Movies might seem exciting, but sometimes real life sadness sneaks in. It's like a hidden part of the story that the audience doesn't see. In this case, the sadness behind the scenes showed how strong the actors were, even when life got tough. So, while the audience enjoyed watching the movie, they didn't know about the sadness that was happening in real life behind the scenes. It just goes to show that making movies isn't always easy, but the people involved are really strong. In an unexpected twist behind the scenes, the 1946 film had a heartbreaking revelation. One of the actors who starred alongside the leading lady developed romantic feelings for her during the filming. However, she was married to the director at the time, causing tension on set. This unrequited love added depth to their performances, influencing the dynamic between their characters. Directed by Charles Vidor, the movie is set in post-World War II Buenos Aires and revolves around a casino owner and his mysterious wife. Filled with suspense and passion, the film tells a gripping tale of betrayal and intrigue. The leading lady's character is a femme fatale whose charm captivates both her husband and his business associate. The film's cinematography, especially the memorable scene of a sensual hair flip, became emblematic of classic Hollywood glamour. Her performance remains one of her most memorable, showcasing her talent as an actress. The themes of love, jealousy, and betrayal strike a chord with audiences, making it a timeless classic. Despite its age, the movie continues to be celebrated for its engaging storyline and memorable performances. In a surprising twist, one sad truth about a beloved movie is that its leading lady faced personal struggles during its production. She battled with abusive relationships and alcoholism, which cast a shadow over her performance. Despite her professional success, her inner turmoil added depth to her portrayal. Directed by Charles Vidor, the movie is a noir classic exploring themes of love, betrayal, and redemption in post-World War II America. Set in a glamorous yet sinister world, it revolves around an enigmatic character and her tumultuous relationship with her ex-lover. Their chemistry drives the narrative, culminating in a shocking twist. The movie stands out for its groundbreaking cinematography and memorable musical score. Despite mixed reception initially, it has become a cult classic influencing filmmakers and captivating audiences for generations. Its lasting impact is a reminder of the challenges faced by many in the entertainment industry. Amidst the glitz and glamour of classic Hollywood, there lies a tale of cinematic allure and behind-the-scenes complexities. In a bygone era of silver screen mystique, a certain performance captivated audiences with its blend of allure and vulnerability. During the filming of a 1946 movie, an iconic scene featuring a sultry striptease was executed not by the leading actress herself, but by her double, a talented dancer named Chris. This decision stemmed from the actress's discomfort with the scene's demands, revealing a poignant contrast between the character's confident persona and the actress's personal struggles. Despite the glamorous facade of the film, this behind-the-scenes fact sheds light on the challenges faced by actors during production. The narrative unfolds against a backdrop of deception and betrayal, adding layers of drama to the storyline. The movie continues to enthrall audiences with its timeless exploration of love, jealousy, and redemption.